You think Nick Saban needs you? You stupid. You're going to Tennessee? Half y'all going to schools that don't even offer you. If you're good, it don't matter where you go, they're going to find you. I promise you that. A lot of y'all, y'all want to go to the Alabamas, the North Carolinas, the North Carolina States. Y'all going to be there for four years and not have a meaningful game. Oh, uh, but I got a catch, though. It was senior day. It was a slant. Relax. Bro, you better go somewhere where you got to put yourself first. Because when you play for that G, when you play for that A, when you play for that T, when you play for that AU, bro, they're putting themselves first. They're bulletproof. Nothing and no one will ever, I got you, will ever mess up their situation. Whether a quarterback, receiver, DB, nothing. Coach. Man, that, those schools are bulletproof. So to think that they want me, they need me. Man, bro, they don't need you. Good everybody, peace and blessings is the King Byron X, the original orator of real, the daughter of truth, magnificent boss player, but ain't no games being played. Thanking God for what I got, but asking God what he needs in return. Today I will be putting some paint where the lane can't, light where it's dark. I got some side for the patches in the grass. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and let's get it. So today, I want to talk about a few different things that I wish somebody told me when I played the game, you know what I mean? Um, if you're really a dog, you know, and you consider yourself a complete football player, the scouts will find you. The people will find you. You know what I mean? It's been proven over and over again. You know what I'm saying? Cam Newton did it at Blinn College. Aaron Rodgers did it at City College in San Francisco, right? So the lesson I want to push it for free is, you know what I mean? You got to go where you're needed not where you want to be destination you are yearning for right the people that you're trying to get around the things that you want don't want you i say i say like we got to look at it like a business move not no uh you know glory move you know cam Newton did it at blend college aaron Rodgers did it tyree hill did it alva kamara did it oj simpson did it and we got to look at the greats that's doing it right now at a high level that's competing with all these D1 athletes and outshining them too. You feel me? I want to tell the story about the complete football player. And um, the complete football player is someone who is well-rounded in all areas of the game. I'm talking about in the morning, he's having that morning run. He's coming in, he's coming to school. He's handling his business in the classroom. He's dominating, you know what I'm saying, the, the film room to the level that you wouldn't even think like the details that he knows about the game understand the game on an intellectual level you know what i'm saying um you know and really knows that it's not about just being on the football field but knows that it's about being in that classroom and getting them scored and getting that test right you know what i'm saying and then honing your craft because it's almost like it's almost like you. It's almost like you, you're playing yourself if you if you if you can't be a become a student athlete. You know what I'm saying? You have to become a student athlete first. That student must. That student athlete. You know what I'm saying? Is mandatory. You know, or you won't go nowhere. You will stay right within the perimeters of your city, and you will force. You will be forced to either get a job at a shoe store, or you will be out in the hot sun working. Or if you got a, a family that has a business, your ass would be right under them working. You know what I'm saying? If you got your own hustle, you're going to be working. You're going to be back. You're going to be at the grind. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to get that M like everybody else in his life. You're trying to get that house. You're trying to get that car. You know what I'm saying? All that shit. Worry-free days goes away. Worry-free days goes away. You know what I'm saying? So... Here's a quick story on how one of the best running backs I ever saw play the game in South Florida besides Dalvin Cook. His name was Mike Bellamy. Kind of what you think your chances are. Obviously, you're kind of leading this thing pretty yeah, big. Well, I'm ranked first in one and two tonight. So um, I just came out here pretty much just to run my race, to stay in the blocks, and that's pretty much it. My coach just told me to be comfortable and be fine with everything and just sit and just see what happens. And tell me what you just did. Uh, I, I just ran the 100. Um, I just cruised across the line. I don't know my time yet, so hopefully I'm just waiting for the time to hit. 
All right, so talk to me a little bit about your recruitment right now. Uh, obviously, Clemson's kind of in the front runner position. So tell me how that happened and what's going on with that. Um, honestly, um, I like Clemson right now. Um, I'm going up to visit their college in a couple of weeks. But I already said, like, when I was a freshman, like, wherever I can go, wherever, whoever's playing me, that's where I want to go. Mike Bellamy is probably one of the best running backs I ever saw touch the football, you know what I'm saying, from the hike to the motherfucking, you know, referee throwing his, you know, hands in the air. It was explosive, man. I'm talking about, you know, they ran uh, a wishbone offense. And so there was three running backs, you know what I'm saying? And the one would always go in motion. And uh, they would end up tossing it, running it up the middle. And um, it just you could not stop it. You could not stop it. One thing about Port Charlotte High School or, you know, Charlotte County in Florida is... You know, these boys play together from Pop Warner all the way through high school. And the offense, the defense, they're very similar. The, the same offense used in Pop Warner is the same uh, offense that's used in high school. So I can remember this kid, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I can remember his jersey. I can remember the dreads. He wasn't he wasn't that big of a kid, but I'm talking about... It looked like he was running a 4-2 every time he got the football. I mean, football speed is different from track speed. And, you know, the level of acceleration that this kid had, man, was just like, you just knew he was an NFL player. As um, soon as you saw him touch the ball, absolutely one of the greatest players that I ever saw play the game. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, he, was able, he wasn't able to fulfill his destiny due to not being a complete football player, you know, getting in trouble off the field, not having the grades off the field, you know, missing, you know, uh, a lot of a lot of different things due to the fact that, you know, uh, preventative maintenance wasn't established up front before he even attended Cl uh, Clemson University. I wanted to speak on the downfalls that we all have, you know what I'm saying? And I wanted to speak on how we can prevent, you know, other players in the future from messing up. And one 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 key reason, one key lesson is to, you know, stay focused, stay available, and, you know, stay ahead of time, you know, plan ahead. You know, uh, planning is, planning for a goal you know what I'm saying, is almost like, you know, you're cutting it 50% down the middle when you can already premeditate the idea, objective, you know what I'm saying, and you can already fully think it through versus just doing something and then making shit work as, as though it's going to be perfect as if you planned it. So, you know, not planning, not planning is not planning at all is planning to fail. And I believe that uh, Mike Bellamy didn't plan. He didn't plan correctly on his his mentality, his attitude, the behavior. You know what I'm saying? Like that shit remained the same, you know. And of course, you know, again, like Cam Newton said, you know, these colleges don't care whether you're a superb athlete. They don't need you. If anything, you know, um, you know, they're convincing you that you need them. You know what I'm saying? And that's why you commit. You know what I mean? They do need you, but at the same time, they don't need you. You're not like a in all be all. There's a million of you just like you. It, you know, they just they just got to find it. And if they haven't found them, another recruiter has gotten that kid like you. So there are other kids like you. You have to understand that, you know, unfortunately, Mike Bellamy was kicked off Clemson University. Tigers backfield, meanwhile, may have a bit of a different look come game day due to the suspension of reserve running back Mike Bellamy for a violation of team rules. Bellamy did not play in the ACC championship and will obviously miss the Orange Bowl. As for his future, here's Coach Dabo Sweeney. Expectation is, uh, you know, he'll he'll have an opportunity uh, to, um, you know, come back in January and, and uh, you know, if he if he does the right things, have a chance to go through spring. If he doesn't, he won't. So, you know, that's just really all there is to say on it. And that was pretty much the end of it. Here's a guy that could have been, you know, five-star NFL running, running back. You know what I'm saying? Gamron T. Gamron T. Like, you know, there was nobody running a rock like this kid. And, you know, unfortunately, he fell short from minor mistakes. You know what I'm saying? That we can't go back and change. 
You know what I mean? All we could do is just learn from the history. That way, you know what I'm saying? Tomorrow ain't a mystery. You feel me? And we can go ahead and do our thing, apply the game in such a way that no one can knock us off our pivot. We're impregnable. You know what I'm saying? Nothing can knock the walls down to fuck up this mission, to fuck up this goal. Motherfucker, you can't knock me off my horse. It's the difference between Sammy Watkins and Mike Bellamy. Sammy Watkins, you know, premeditated his future before he even stepped into it. You know what I'm saying? You can catch him, you know, uh, after school working out. You can catch him with the right crowd. You don't catch him, you know what I'm saying, trying to be no gangster online, on the internet. You know what I'm saying? He was marketable and he was worth the millions of dollars that he received in the NFL to this day based off him, you know what I'm saying, sculpting himself to be the man he needed to be and not the man that, you know, not the product that he was uh, brought around in Fort Myers due to the environment. You know what I'm saying? He completely shifted towards something else. And of course, you know what I'm saying? Um, he is now, you know, a, shit, a Fort Myers legend when it comes down to, you know what I'm saying, playing in the NFL. Same thing with Deion Sanders. You know, I read his book. He talked about how, you know, he was so serious about getting his mother out of the hospital and getting her from working, period that he didn't even go around people who smoke weed. And if you did smoke weed, he didn't associate with you. You could be his boy, but he's not going to sit in the car and allow you to just, you know what I'm saying, do what you choose to fucking prevent him from, you know what I'm saying, progressing. You know what I'm saying? And you could tell, like, you could see how people are, you know, they have their bumps in the road. Everybody does. But what separates those from... The what separates the ones who actually make it to the mountaintop versus the one who came up short. You go at it again, you still don't make it to the mountaintop, you know, versus the one that really did make it to the mountaintop. So, yeah, man, I just wanted to speak on that. I wanted to react to Cam Newton breaking down to the kids that, you know what I'm saying, you really don't have to go to a top tier D1 school to go to the NFL. Because really, a lot of kids go to these SEC schools or you know ACC and you know they play it four years play a few downs out of the four years and you know get their degree and go back home and get a job get a regular ass job it's like you know you was a superstar five star you know royalty on the grass when you play a football and then all that's taken away when you're you know you're pushed back into the perimeters of your fishbowl which is your city and now you have to, you know, make a life, um, make a life. And you also have to live with the regrets of what you didn't do, what you could have done right, what you didn't do right. You know what I'm saying? And you really don't have to be no, you know, you don't have you, you're not a loser. Take that same attitude that you have towards football, that same attitude you have towards being a professional athlete and put that into becoming a professional father, a professional man. A professional period in many areas you know a professional uh weightlifter a professional runner a professional speaker you know what i'm saying finances you know professional real estate agent professional is so many things that we can profess in he turned his back on a football career 37.5 million dollar contract to become a farmer Jason's mission is to grow food for the hungry. Nearly everything he grows on that farm is given away to those in need. Since 2014, he's provided over 1.6 million servings of fresh produce, but he doesn't do it alone. But look at this, beautiful kale um, growing still out here in the field. Life isn't much different for me on the farm as it was in NFL. I just simply switched fields. Before, I had to wrestle 300-pound defensive linemen. Now, I have to wrestle 1,000-pound cows. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah! There's no way that I would go back. It's not power steering. It's a lot of work. It is not easy, but I would not trade it for anything else in this world. Right at 7 o'clock in the morning, Everybody's doing their chores. Good job, babies. Get all these watermelons out of this field. This is before breakfast, before school starts. Everybody is getting after it and getting some work done on the farm. 
that's the cool thing about it is that, you know, it is a lot of work, but there's always a bounty. There's always a reward. The children, they learn discipline, work ethic, and responsibility. And none of it is forced. It all comes natural. God told me that he had something greater in store for me than all of my football career. I couldn't see it. But now, hindsight being 2020, wow, like this is, this is my Super Bowl. This is the King Byron X, the original orator of real, Dundada of truth, magnificent boss player, but ain't no games being played. Thanking God for what I got, but asking God what he needs in return.